Hey everyone, my name is Nakia and I am currently a dropshipper on Amazon looking to teach others like yourself from thrive at amazon.com. So today we're going to do something a little different today. So today I'm going to answer a question from one of my subscribers named Jasper and his question was and he asked in your several years of dropshipping what were your biggest problems that you faced and how did you overcome them? So another issue I had was making a mistake with the item that I sold. So basically one of the things that happened, so I had found a hot seller and this was a iron, like an actual clothing iron. And I placed all these orders to only realize afterwards that though it was the same brand, it was actually a different model. So you can imagine how nervous I was, how um, frustrated I was, and I was like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? Because I just sent a ton of orders of the wrong irons to the customer. And I remember I worried, I didn't eat, I think I didn't eat late really for the day, and I was just like so nervous about this, um, I didn't know what to do, I was just like stuck. So I remember as I was getting the orders, something like my intuition, if you whatever you want to call it, was telling me like there has to, maybe there's something off with the product, which is not always like that. But I was like, oh, nah, like it must be nothing. But then I realized what I learned from this was you have to listen to your intuition. If you feel something's off, usually it's something's off. So really listen to that. Don't just look at the photo of the item, look at the details, look at the title look at the rank, look at the model number, make sure everything matches up between the supplier, the store, and the Amazon listing. But I'm sure you're still wondering, how did I resolve the iron issue since I sent out a bunch of wrong models to the customer? So the main key in saving me and saving me from very angry customers was I communicated. Um, so what I did was I emailed each and every customer being honest and letting them know that it was the wrong model. And you remember how I told you I worried about it, I didn't eat or anything. You know what happened? Like I think it was only one customer that returned it. No one responded, no one cared, and everyone kept it, which was shocking. So I think communication is key. You're letting them know beforehand that, hey, you could return it. Um, I'm so sorry about this, but it looks like we saw, sent the wrong model. And usually people will decide if they want to return it, if they want to get mad, or, you know, happy, whatever it may be, they'll let you know. But in this case, there was only one customer that decided to return it, and I remember the person wasn't even angry. They're just like, oh, it's okay, let's just, ret I'm just going to return it for a refund. And that was that, I just refunded the customer, and I remember like that was the end of that issue. So if you ever have an issue like that where you send the wrong model, you could either choose to communicate with them, or there's always the other option of just leaving it alone and seeing if people return it. Because sometimes... People don't really care as long as it's within, like with an iron, I'm guessing like the reason why people didn't make a big deal out of it because it wasn't like a special gadget, right? The iron does one thing, is iron your clothes. Um, and it was very similar. Um, there wasn't missing any features, it just looked different. That was what I remembered it did. It looked similar but different. And another thing I learned in this situation is don't worry first, find a solution first. Do not worry, refuse to worry, always find a solution. The customers don't bite, Amazon doesn't bite. What you have to do is, the main thing is finding a solution and making sure that your customers are happy. So do you wanna know my next obstacle? I actually sold a fake product. <gasps> and this was kinda of like a similar case, but not really like the previous issue. But basically what happened is, I looked at the item um, where it was being sold, and this, this item was being sold on eBay, and I looked at the listing, I checked the model number, so this time I did do everything. I checked the photo, I looked at the model number, and I was like, okay, it looks like the same. Everything's good. So tell me why, tell me why, I started sending out the items. I got hundreds of orders like these. I started selling out the items, and then I got one return, and I was like, okay, maybe it's just one return, because sometimes people do change their minds. They don't, they get the item and they change their mind. And the person was just like, oh, no longer needed. Oh, I was like, okay, that's cool. So I started getting a ton of emails. I started getting a flood of emails with people saying, oh, like the universal piece is missing. Because you have to stand, most of the time when you sell a product, you don't even know what it is. You don't even have a clue what the item is. 
Um, so then people are like, oh, this looks like a fake item. They're like, oh, I don't see the name of the product on the item. Like they don't see the brand name. And I started getting all these emails and you could basically see what transpired in some of these emails here. I'm gonna show you some of them. So as promised, I'm gonna show you some of the emails that I got. So you can see here, some of them were like, they weren't scary. Um, so this was one from Michael and he was saying, oh, I didn't get the adapter, didn't see anything. Um, and there came with no packaging. This thing costs a lot more than others. It should be the real thing. So it continued going. So if I go through some of the emails, and I said, oh, I, he, they're like, oh, I received item, no instructions, it didn't fit trimmer. This is for that same item I was talking about. And you, you'll notice that I always send a return label. So I responded and always send a return label. So it does keep on going. Like, let's see here. That's not the same one. Oh, different, different item. Let's go back here. Uh, so that's that one. Hold on. So you'll see here, like, oh, like, oh, I received it. It wasn't the correct one. Um, and this was the same one. Like, they're like, how am I going to return it? So there was a few emails of them, like, complaining, um, which is understandable. So this guy goes in detail and talks about pricing and everything. But the thing about these is it's not the matter of price that it's not the matter of because they paid less so this sold for like $20 and they could and then I paid $12 for it so that's how the profit came but it's more because it was the wrong item so when it comes to fake products Amazon does not play around with this they're very strict on this and they will shut your store down so that's why you have to make sure you don't have fake products so right away I contacted the seller and I was like hey what's up like this, these items are not genuine because based on what people are saying um, and so please don't ship any of the other items and guess what he did so now I'm gonna be getting into um, talking about a item that has done really well in my store that has sold really well and I'm gonna tell you the reasons why it did well so hey let's check it out so I wanted you to, sh I just wanted to show a product that has been selling really well. And one of the products is, um, it was the Ryan's World Exclusive Glow. So I wanted to show you the reason why it sold. So you'll see right now it's at $93. Um, but at the time when I was selling it, it ranged from, if you look at here, it ranged from like $102 to $115. So sometimes it was averaging about $23 a profit, $11 in profit. And you can sell, you can see I sold like 13 of these. So you can pretty much do the math if we did even um, 13. I made about two or $300 just from selling this item, just selling 13 of these items. Um, so the reason why it sold is one of the things is we made sure that it matched. So it did match. Um, and at the time, um, Target had actually did a discount and it was $10 off, so it was $69. Um, and then what we looked at is we look at, biggest thing we look at is rank. This was in Toys and Games, and um, 20, it's $20,000. So what I always tell people is that when you're listing an item, you try to get as low rank as possible. It is a bit, it can get a bit hard, but as you do it more and more, you'll get better at it. But what I always say is stick with the six figure digit or five figure digit. So when I say that is if it's a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand dollars and under, it, it 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 works perfectly. But the more low you get, so five figures is the more sales you get. And if you can get into four figure range is is even better. But obviously that can get a little bit harder. Um because what happens is the more lower you get, it gets more competitive and then the profit's not as good. So I usually stay around this range. So this is really a big factor. This didn't have that many reviews. Usually reviews help. I always tell people reviews help because it helps tell you like um, how the items are, what people see in it. But this is selling because this is a known person. Um, as you know, this he has a big YouTube channel um so this did really well and just from the rank even though i had no reviews like i had one but even though i hardly had reviews this did awesome awesomely really well um so again if you look at this as proof you can see i sold a few of these items you can see here um i sold them and so they're averaging about 10 12 sometimes 20 dollars 
Um, and this was, I would say, it's a good profit because you want items that are selling over and over again in multiples. Um, and that's how your your profit will increase. Um, so this was a surprise item. Um, you could choose to look within this category, toys and games. Um, you can list the item if it's still in profit. Um, but this is the whole point of this is just to show you an example of how things work. Um, items that sold really well for me. And you can get an idea of what hot items are. Alrighty, so we're gonna be going on to the, continuing the story. He still shipped them, though I never got a negative feedback. You wanna know why and what prevented this? For every customer that emailed me, every customer that opened a return request, right away i was on it i sent them a shipping i sent them shipping labels i even like cooked up an email to email them letting them letting them know how sorry i was and um and the key with this is you always when you write these emails is you always blame it on the vendor you never blame it on yourself you say oh the vendor did this and because you can't tell them they don't know you're drop shippers right you can't tell them like oh i looked at the listing and this happened no, you have to like have a smart response so people can calm down the goal is to make them calm down and then make them feel more at ease to know that you're looking at the situation. I can show you the email here. I'm going to show you the email. So I just wanted to show you the email I sent to each and every customer. So I said it has come to your attention that the vendor has sent packages that seem to be incorrect. And that is not how we do business as we are a family owned business. And we're very concerned and we have went ahead and deleted the listing. But Mr. C attached label once returned, we will refund you right away. So when I wrote this template, it worked really well because um, I was acknowledging my mistake um, and I made sure to tell them, hey, I'm a, legit, I'm a legitimate business. Because the first thing a customer might think sometimes is that you're not a real business or anything like that. And I, might, I made sure to address it and I made sure to sound sincere. And I also attached the label. So I did everything at once and I resolved the situation at once. Um, and remember I told you, you always blame it on the vendor. You never blame it on the store. Right, because when you do that, it helps a bit and it shifts their focus and they're like, oh, okay, it was a vendor that did this. It wasn't technically the quote unquote store. And what I try to do sometimes is I'll try to change my name so people could think it's someone else. So I put like Angel or Lemon. Like I try to use like really nice names and it just works because you put like a nice name, people usually are more calmer. And because I did this, honestly, I didn't get like feedback, negative feedback at all. Um, the only thing with this was, you know, you'll get a few upset customers. But honestly, for the most part, most people are very calm and they simply return the item and that was that. And I really do believe because of this, um, I didn't get any negative feedbacks because people were served really quickly. It wasn't like I ignored them so they're not fretting. And right away, I sent them a label. So everything was like covered, pretty much covered. But this is what happened. Then Amazon came knocking on my door and they're like, hey, they're like, hey, we saw that you're, we're getting complaints from customers about um, an inauthentic item. And so we're gonna need proof and you have 72 hours to give this before we shut down your store. So they basically wanted invoices of the fake product and they wanted me to prove that I was not sending it out myself. So they wanted to know that I wasn't on purpose sending out the product to people that were fake. Obviously I wasn't because that was not my attention. And if you search within the Amazon community, people always say spice up your PO, write this, tell them what they wanna hear, all this stuff. But you know what I did to avoid that suspension is I was honest. Yes, honesty, that's what did it. I just basically told them exactly what happened, how I found the item. It looked good. This vendor had like five stars. Um, it was very convincing because the model numbers matched. And they basically reinstated. I even sent them the invoice. I sent them a retail invoice. So now you know, retail invoice do work. So don't disregard them. Even if you have retail invoice, they don't have to be straight from the manufacturer you can give a retail invoice but you have to be honest and they reinstated me guys i was honest um it was very nerve-wracking but i just did what they want they i gave them what they want and it worked another obstacle you'll find is with customers so though it's a very this is a very automobile biz, autom automatable oh my gosh i can't even say automatable it's a very automated business 
and yes you can work less hours and make a full-time income one of the biggest things is dealing with customers especially if they want a return or if you're not happy with the item for any other reason one of the things I tell people and this is what I've learned um, one of the issues I've came across and things I've learned is never ever let the customer manipulate you customers will try to make you they'll try to take advantage of you they'll try to tell you oh they threw it a box and you need to send me a box no 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 so if it's a return they need to return the item and the good thing about Amazon is they do back you up with that so let me tell you a story so recently so recently um, not recently but like a while back there was a customer that they ordered I can't remember what they ordered um, I would have to check but they ordered an item um, from me and I bought it from Lowe's and they wanted to return the item because there was some type of price difference um, so you're gonna get that a lot especially when you drop ship people will receive the item and then realize that it is at a, a lower price that you got it for which is completely fine this is a main worry from people that that when they start drop shipping but maybe like 1% of customers will worry about this out of hundreds of customers like you're hardly a customers like this so they tried returning they tried returning it and I just told them hey you're gonna have to send back you're gonna have to find a box but unfortunately I can't give you a refund unless you send the box so then they tried opening up an ADZ claim it didn't work because I explained to Amazon I was like hey I'm ready I gave them a label and they're refusing to return the item and so I remember Amazon closed it and I ended up winning it because they have the one policy Amazon has is they have to return the item for a refund especially if I'm giving them a label now if I was ignoring them that's a whole different story so another thing is sometimes people will open up a return request and it's not a reason that's feasible for you to give a label so I would usually give a physical address and sometimes people get upset, open up an A to Z claim and guess what happens? Then they email me asking me, Amazon emails me asking me, hey, um, this customer wants to return it, can you please send a physical address? And that's exactly what I do. So people, customers will try to go around it, they'll try to take advantage. Don't fall for it, don't get stressed out about it. it really, it's a normal way of business and you just have to learn what you're rights are in the terms of Amazon's terms. And the beauty of A to Z claims is if the customer chooses to not return the item, Amazon will just close the claim and they'll have to, the customer would have to reopen it on their end. But as far as the return goes, um, it's not in play until they return the item. Another obstacle I have come across is people doing chargeback claims. Now, the beauty of chargeback claims is as long as you send the item and you have a tracking number proving it was delivered in the right city and the right state, you'll always win that chargeback claim. Amazon does not take lightly to chargeback claims because they have their own system in place. They have they have the A to Z claim to protect the buyer, so they expect you to use it because chargeback claim claims chargeback claims charges the company money. Whenever they do a chargeback claim, the credit card company processor would then charge them an extra amount. So that's why you see a lot of companies don't like chargeback claims. So as long as you send that, usually they'll close it. The only time you'll ever lose a claim, a chargeback claim, is if you don't send the item or if they return the item and you didn't um, refund them in time, then you'll get hit with a thing with a chargeback claim. But apart from that, you'll always win it. Like the protection is pretty good on Amazon. But these were just some of the obstacles that I came across on Amazon. And that's how I got to know my way around the business. And those, these are some of the solutions that helped me. Faced and overcame was basically just from taking initiative and finding a solution. Never stay stuck. If you have to ask other people with your community, do that. If you have to ask me questions, do that but there's always a solution to an issue there's always a way around something you don't have to get taken advantage of you're gonna do mistakes in this business like any other business and you just learn from them and hopefully this helps you to learn how to face them so if you guys haven't yet and you love what you hear head to thrive with Amazon and don't forget to get the free beginner guide and this is basically dropshipping explained 
using Amazon. You're gonna see here, you're gonna see me here talking about how I got started, how you two could get started, and, I'll, and I'm gonna show real proof of when I got started to how much sales I get now. And of course, don't forget to sign up for the free masterclass. I do include the link in here on the last page. And there you'll get your free masterclass. Don't forget to sign up for that as well to be on the wait list. And just like Jasper had questions and I made a video especially for him and I'm sure you guys because I'm sure other people have the question too and I answered them feel free to put any questions you have below about drop shipping any questions you've always wondered about and I'll be surely to pick them and do another video on them so keep the questions coming feel free to put them in the comments or you can email me however and I'll be happy to answer the questions and feature them on my video on my weekly video